basic extrication drill, one car on its side, one victim. Uh, the goal is to get some more tool time so everyone gets their hands on some tools. We have to stabilize the car and de-energize it before we do any of the cuts. The objective when we have someone in a car like this is to remove the car from around the patient and we try to do that with the car being as stable as possible. So we use these rescue jacks to stabilize the car on its side. We use the cribbing to assist in that. And then once we're able to stabilize it, we can make our cuts, remove the car from around the patient, and then extricate the patient out of the vehicle. So let's take a look at the rescue jacks real quick, okay? So initially, step chucks and wedges are great. That's all you really need, right? You throw some step chucks, you throw some wedges, you pop a hood, you de-energize, right? Once we can get the rescue jacks in place, then we can do some of our big cuts, taking out our A, B, and C posts. If you can get into stuff like this, this is great, right? EPI. Some some of the under frame under the, underneath the hood, this is great. Central power 22. Like I said, if you had power to and punch power. a hole, you could have done it in the hood, fine. I like yeah. removing the hood so I see what I'm getting 22. at underneath Sorry, here. Makes it a lot easier. Come to the back. And on the bottom, you got a, you got a lot of different options, okay? So the pin's designed to go through some of the holes, but if they're obviously rusted out, you want to avoid them, right? And then make sure you're into something structural, nothing that moves. So no suspension, no tires, um, no small pieces of metal, and nothing that's completely rusted out, okay? But you've got your pin, you've got this U-channel, and then you've got the chain drop on the other side that we can actually lift off of and stabilize off of too, okay? Um, when you tie into the bottom, this strap could have gone directly into the car somewhere. You don't have to marry them directly together as long as they make a fillet into the car, right? The top being connected and the bottom being connected. That's fine, okay? The one thing the manufacturer always said though is don't wrap anything that could be frayed metal or hot with that ratchet strap, okay? So if you had to and you wanted to utilize you know, this strap, use like you did here, the chain. The guys the other day or the group the other day set up their their rescue jack on the other side drop the strap underneath and then hook their chain into frame here and dropped it straight down so it was chain that was touching the underside of the car and not the ratchet strap does that make sense the tow keys on the j hook are designed for all these holes so if you found one that you wanted to use right that you could put this into and you could lift if this wasn't rusted out you could lift off of right um, this I'd be a little bit worried about. It might move on you, right? Um, but anywhere along some, some frame, if you wanted to lift off of this or stabilize off of this, right? Or tie directly into this, that would have been fine. But just remember, try to keep that strap low so it creates the bottom of the A frame. This is perfectly acceptable to wrap things like the rest of your C post or your A post if you left some of it intact. And then you could tie this rescue jack directly into the bottom of it, right? Just remember, you might want to wrap this chain around that post so when you pull tension on it, it binds on the A post like we, like we did when, when the, the rescue jack personnel came out. There's a thousand ways to do it. I'm not telling you there's only one, but um, you, know, you just got to get comfortable using the tool and, and adapting and overcoming with it, using different chains and different connections. This car is yours now. So if you want to mess with the rescue jacks and try them a dozen different ways, go ahead and get comfortable with them. Once everyone's comfortable with that, using the rescue jacks in different ways, we'll dump it with the spreaders, and then you can do all your cuts and get more tool time. But you might start out high, yeah, right? Okay, okay. So go one inch, you know, it's starting to shimmy already. I would tie into more structure, right? Okay. Something that's tied into frame, if I could, right? You could drop it down, if you could, you could drop it down there. But remember, the tie-in for this should be low, okay? Yeah, so the goal is to keep this low um, so you make a full A-frame. So you're up top here and your strap is actually tied in low. I tied into frame and then I tied this into my jack on the other side. Now it's a low pull, right? It comes from the bottom and everything that's touching sharp metal, hot metal, whatever, catalytic converters, right? It's, it's not touching, it's metal touching it. I'm fine with this, I just don't want my strap against it, right? So it kind of pulls this thing down and then you have a straight pull underneath. Okay. Just options, right? Great point that Lieutenant Mullis brought up. We never hook ratchet strap to ratchet strap. Ratchet strap to chain is the, is the only option for us, right? We never take a ratchet strap from this, tie it into another ratchet strap or the other ratchet strap from the other rescue jack. 
Hey, make sure you're not cutting the patient's leg, so could somebody keep an eye on that? Okay, yeah, get him off to the side. Tactical uh, objective met, right? One patient out of the vehicle. Didn't take a lot of time. So a couple of quick things, right? So the rescue jacks, we talked about it. You can use them a variety of different ways. To create a full A like this is the best, according to the manufacturer, when we only have two of them. If this car was already leaning this way, or on an embankment, or up against the Jersey barrier, it's perfectly acceptable to, to operate one here, and then one back here, right? If you can grab skeleton, like uh, structure of the car, and not just sheet metal, that's the best. But if you were just stabilizing, you could use your pick of your halogen, make a hole, and use the pin on that to stabilize the car. On the underside, you can lift with that pin, but just don't lift into straight sheet metal, okay? You can use the pin to lift, but not if you're creating that hole and just lifting off a of sheet metal, okay? If we can, let's keep the whole kit patient compartment or area open and then maximize efficiency of cuts. So, you know, that's why we're peeling and peeking to make it as easy as we can as we go along, right? ABC, you flopped it down um, and then you finished off your cuts on the bottom. So real down and dirty tactic, real quick, if we have a rapid extrication and we have our A-post intact and our steering wheel still available and we need to create another three, four inches of lift, if we take our spreaders, open them up wide, grab our A-post and the steering wheel, we're going to be able to marry the two together and move that steering wheel out of the patient's way. You can see you gain another three, four inches if you cut the bottom of the steering wheel after you after you manipulate it. You've gained another six inches of room that that down and under patient will be able to extricate quickly. So we peeled and peaked, but then we still cut through the plate, right? So I understand our tools will cut through almost everything, but at the same time, if I can peel and peak and cut through a, a weaker structure, I'm going to do that because it's going to be maximize efficiency of cuts, right? So when we peel and peek and we see a big plate here or a, a coil of a seatbelt with a bracket, well, don't cut through all that. Just cut through the, the weak spot, right? Um, I was telling Johnny, they, they want the tools to always cut like this, like you're cutting paper. Don't ever clamp them down on this because every time we do that, all we do is compress the metal as opposed to shear through it or cut through it. Let's think about maximizing efficiency of cuts. I always say it, right? But this is designed to crumple the fender okay. this is the structure that's going to yeah. hold it right so your relief or your initial cut should be through this if you only were going to make one cut i'd rather be through the skeleton than just through the skin just right, right there yeah you know there's two schools of thought on what side of the strut but either side of the strut will work yeah and scotty see how you took a huge chunk the idea is if I, if I just crumple this or pinch it, it might just compress the metal and actually make it stronger. And it's starting to fold right here, which is exactly what you wanted. It's absolutely gonna make that relief. Okay, there are two schools of thought. Um, you can do it either side. Yep, you're gonna fight the suspension a little bit, but the tool will overcome that. So there's two schools of thought. You can cut it on this side or you can cut it on this side. See if you can bury it a little bit more there. You can do little bites to make better purchases and then ram it home in there to get the best bite. There you go. Allons-y. There it goes, Scotty, there's your cut. Yeah, Fidge, you know you got like a deeper bite in there too? And now it's pushing off and of not just the gold tip, but actual the, the kind of like arm of that thing. A lot of front end impacts, the patient goes down and underneath the dashboard. So if that's impinged upon them, we have to have a way to displace the dash. And the two ways we do it is either we push it with the ram or we spread it with that, that spreader tool so that we open that gap up. And now you can see, even if a patient's feet were in here, we'd have plenty of access to get their feet out. So it's called a dash push or a dash lift.